Welcome back to the Combo Cabal. I am your host, Bryant Cook, and today we are playing Lotus Combo in Pioneer. I've been secretly telling people about this deck list over, you know, the last week or so, and it is incredible. And there's not a single card choice in this list that I'm unsure about. I've played a lot of Lotus over the last few weeks preparing for this list, and it all started with my last video about how badly I got crushed by Winota. And I was looking for a way of possibly beating that deck. In that video, I mentioned Fog. But then looking at more lists, I noticed that they had Archon of Emeria and even sometimes Eidolon of Rhetoric in the board. We needed better answers to beat that deck. And Anger of the Gods just wasn't cutting it. Which is weird because there's Anger still in this list, but we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, that's why we're playing this list today. That's what sparked this. And I've tried a bunch of different lists since that video. I mean, a bunch. And I've really perfected what we have here today. So let's just start with Winota. The plan isn't to cyborg in Anger of the Gods. I originally tested um, Storm, some, Storm's Wrath. That's what it's called. And I found that card wasn't actually what I wanted. Partially because of uh, the Apollo card. The I can't think of what it's called right now. But it's two and a white. Exiles a card in your hand. And then it costs two more to cast. So Storm's Wrath becomes six, six mana. It's just too expensive to cast. I didn't like it. Where Rending Volley can kill Winona before they even move to their attack step. It kills Eidolon of Rhetoric. It kills uh, Archon of Emeria without ever slowing you down. One mana is pretty cheap in this deck. And the big idea is that you can cast Rending Volley while copying your Lotus Field with Thespian Stage on their end step. So you don't really lose any tempo by playing something like Rending Volley. It's honestly it's sort of the perfect answer. You can board it in against decks like Blue Red, Thing in the Ice... Uh, sometimes if there's phoenixes, you can still board it in if you want to. Uh, you can board it in against spirits. It's pretty versatile. This card is very, very, very good. And in the future, it even answers Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. So I am actually very, very happy with Rending Volley. It's been pretty amazing in my testing. I've been winning about 50% of my matches against Winota, where that might not seem impressive, but considering I was winning like 20%, Rending Volley is doing a lot of work in the post board games. So it's pretty good. Uh, really happy with that card. And I'm not boarding in Angers. The, the reason that the Angers are still in the deck is for the burn matchup, the mono red matchup. You need a way of dealing with Eidolon, and that's what Anger of the Gods does. You board in two, and you keep one in the sideboard for Wish. That's the idea. So when we come and look at this deck list, we only have four red sources, not counting Lotus Field for uh, Running Volley and Anger of the Gods. At least in the last list, that was true. Now we've added Veilcut vale Awakening, which becomes a Veilcut vale Stone Forge, and that provides two additional red sources. I was originally testing a list that had no Blast Zone because I honestly have been pretty low on the card recently. I'm not a really big fan of it at the moment, but I was testing an additional red source there. And I found that really the only matches I was losing were the games where I kept one land Lotus Field hands and just bricked. So. I was looking at a way of getting more lands into the deck on top of uh, still having that high threat density that I'm used to having. And what I came up with was Valakut Awakening. It might seem a little bit weird because I'm not running Dig Through Time and you might be thinking, well, I'm going to cut those for Dig. You can, but honestly, this deck list doesn't need Dig. I tried to fit Digs in. I played three Dig, three Peer. I tried three Peer, two Dig. You know, a bunch of configurations. Dig through time just isn't really what this deck wants. And uh, so let's actually just dig right in. All right. So I was talking with some friends and I decided to take some of my own advice, which was when people build their Lotus combo decks, and actually this goes for a lot of decks in general, they always think about all the cool things they can do once they're winning, like copying their pour over the pages with that new fork, for example, uh, Galvanic Iteration. Is that what it's called? I don't know. It's something like that. But there's a new fork. And they always think about these really cool cards that you can cast once you're winning and once you're ahead. And while that's fine and dandy, once I have my Lotus Field and Thespian Stage combo, I like to call it Tron, once I have my Tron combo in play, I'm going to win the game a majority of the times. In fact, it's like a really high percentage of the time. So I am not focused on winning once I'm already ahead. That's not really what your goal should be. Your focus should be getting to the point where you can win. So that's why cards like Razor are really good, because they get you ahead, they get you to the point where you can win. That's why they're effective. 
And I don't really want to play cards like Fork because they don't really get you there. So let's circle back. I wanted to play cards that get me ahead. So you'll notice there's no copy of Consider in here. I switched to Shimmer. Shimmer at the cost of a single mana gives, digs four cards deep for your Lotus Field, right? Like that's very, very good. And if it doesn't hit Lotus Field, there's a pretty good chance that you're hitting Scrying because you're getting so many looks. Where Consider only looks at two cards. One of the nice things about Consider is it feels Dig. Well, that's no accident. We purposely cut the digs because we're on Shimmers now, just like the Emergent Ultimatum list. Like that, everything about this deck list, I put a ton of thought into. So we have the Shimmers and they've just been overperforming, especially in a list with Triple Brawl. One thing that I've always felt about the Consider list with Brawl was I wasn't really getting full uses out of my Brawl. It's sometimes nice to consider, but it never felt like it was actually pulling that much weight. It was sort of just like nice to have with Dig Through Time. Where Shimmer, any hand that I open up with Shimmer or Scrying, I'm like, hell yes, I'm going to find my combo this game, just because you're looking at so many cards. And Shimmer also just digs four cards for Peer. It's a mini dig through time without the stipulation of being reliant on your graveyard. So effects like Rest in Peace are less good against you. Um, and you just don't need digs. Like with Shimmer and Triple Peer, part of the idea with this deck list is that you're a lot like the Emergent Ultimatum list, where you just have this card that wins the game, which is Peer into the Abyss. And on Peer into the Abyss also plays into the Thassa's Oracle game plan of drawing your entire deck every single game. There's been a few games where I've cast Triple Peer in one turn, just because I have so much mana from Peer into the Abyss and I have to get my deck empty anyway. Peer just does it all. So we're taking that philosophy from the Emergent list, applying it to this one, just resolve Peers, win the game. We're playing Tron. We are assembling a land combo, casting a seven mana spell that wins the game. That's essentially what this deck is now, and it's beautiful. And you have Brawl to accelerate into it as well. Um, and these are your land. Like when you think of the deck that way, it makes a lot more sense when you have Shimmers and Scryings and everything else. So I like the Veilcut Awakenings for the extra lands, just because I felt like the deck's been a lot more consistent with them in it, and I haven't really missed Dig all that much. Um, to circle back to that plus the extra red sources for rending volley and anger and fry i've just been loving it um that's the main philosophy here i'm getting a little bit rambly at this point but that's the idea we are just trying to do everything as efficiently as we can until you get to the point where you can win the game and then just like your deck is already built to go once you've assembled your land combo because not only is shimmer set up it's also perfect for finding your heavy hitters same thing with Veilcut Awakening. I love casting this card. You cast a few pour over the pages, you draw into Veilcut Awakening, all of a sudden you're bottoming five lands and drawing five fresh ones. It's amazing. So you want cards that are good at all points in the game. That's one of the main ideas here is you don't have any card that is only good when you're winning other than peer. Everything can be used in the setup phase as well as the combo turn. All right, so let's just move on to the sideboard. I'm getting a little rambly. I have already mentioned that, but this is Oracle. This is the best win condition that the deck can possibly play, in my opinion. The main deck, Niv, was really good. It's just not as good as Pyrrhon the best. We want to turbo Pyr every single game. That's the concept. Is Niv bad? No, it's great, but it's just not better than Pyrrhon the best. So we're keeping it in the sideboard for those counterspell matchups. And Thass is Oracle. It's just the cleanest win. Some people try to argue with me in the comments that, like, Jace is better. It's not. It dies to removal. Uh, they're like, well, you could cycle in response, but well, that doesn't matter. Thassa's Oracle is still just the most efficient way that you can win. Why wouldn't you just want to play the card that costs the least amount of mana that's the most efficient? It doesn't make any sense, unless you're tied to some sort of narrative about cards you own, which you shouldn't be doing anyway, because Thassa's Oracle is like $8. Uh, anyway, Mystical Dispute, I actually upped to three, because I've been noticing that uh, the... Just Guy Ascendancy deck has been picking up a little bit online, and I was playing 2 Niv, 2 Mystical Dispute, and I've just been having better results with Dispute. Also, it's Narset, which came up a few times against, like, the Is It Phoenix decks, where Mystical Dispute just, like, hit their Narset, they tapped out, and then I was able to get them when they were tapped out because, you know, they couldn't stop me from drawing cards. So, Mystical Dispute, even more effective, especially when we're trying to be a pure deck where we need to draw our deck. Dispute stopping Narset effects is really huge. Dig. So we are not playing strategic planning or consider to fill our graveyard. That said, having one dig in the board to get with Wish is a, like, I've always felt like when I played Wish, I wanted some sort of value card in the board. That's dig for me. 
I always wanted that effect, but I was playing four dig in the main. And then I, there was a short time period where I was trying three dig in the main, one in the board. And I just kept on going, wow, I really like this dig through time, especially when you haven't found the peer yet. And when you're in that like middle combo phase where you're like, okay, I'm going to pour over the pages. I'm going to cast Bale get recovery. I'm going to get back pour. And then you draw into wish and you're like, oh, well, I don't have enough mana for peer yet. That's when you get dig. That's when this card shines. So I like it as a one of in the board. And when you're not playing any other digs in the main, you're going to have enough by the time that you can cast this spell anyway, because you'll have some cards in your graveyard from Lotus Field or anything else you're casting. And if you really need this effect after you've uh, already wished for it, you can always bail get it back because it's the only thing in your deck using the graveyard as a resource now. We already covered Rending Volley, Fry. I did consider just running four Rending Volleys, but Fry being a wishable answer for Narset's also pretty good. And for a single mana when you're also a Brawl deck, I think it's worth it. So I'm running Fry. It also came up in a weird scenario once where, I and I couldn't believe that this actually happened, by the way. Uh, my opponent had Eidolon of Rhetoric in play with, what is it called? Um ranger saga or whatever it's called basically it adds a 1-1 counter to their creature i am terrible with card names by the way um so they had the rangers whatever and they put a 1-1 counter on it and then fry killed their 2-5 and i was just like i can't believe this actually worked out so even against winona when they have you know eidolon they can get it bigger to a four and fry just randomly was in my hand when it happened and it was beautiful we covered anger being for the red decks Niv miss it, you can still wish for it, or but it's mostly to board in against blue decks now, I think. Uh if you're wishing for it, you probably can't win that turn and you can't afford to peer. So it's a weird middle ground, but it's mostly a board card for, in my opinion. It also helps you dodge uh like slaughter game effects on your wish. And then obviously the lotus field in the board, wish stops a main deck slaughter games on your lotus field. All right, so. You might be thinking, Bryant, you're talking about slaughter games. There's only one win condition in your main deck, and that's Wish. Yes. So I understand that people are afraid of losing to slaughter games. And uh, I'm going to say Thought Distortion. That's not the card. I can never remember card names. Uh, I'm just going to look it up. All right, Google. I typed in blue-black cranial extraction. That did not work. Um... Sorry, this is like terrible video content. Okay, I'm just not going to do it. I can't find it. Uh, but it's basically a three mana. It's thought something, cranial extraction. And they remove cards and then you draw cards if they remove them from your hand, whatever. Uh, so those cards aren't even seeing play Niv Delight anymore. Lotus has fallen off the map so much that decks have just started to disrespect Lotus, which is why in this list you will not see any Wilts or Braids. People aren't even playing Damping Sphere anymore or Alpine Moon. And if they are, you have a one of Blast Zone to answer that. But I was playing a list without Blast Zone or a Braid or Wilts in the board and never once ran into a Damping Sphere or Alpine Moon or anything like that. So now's a really good time to be playing Lotus because no one is respecting you, which means that this deck is going to spike an event at some point. Um, that's just the idea. And when they're not running those main deck, you know, instant win cards, you don't need to run a main deck win condition. So that's why I don't have a main deck Niv or a main deck Oracle for splitting my wishes with a Fey or a Masterminds Acquisition. You just don't need to. All right, so I've been going on for 14 minutes. Uh, this intro is super long and I apologize, but I just really wanted to do an in-depth deck tech because I put so much thought into this list. I've probably played 15 Lotus Leagues over the last two weeks creating this list. Like, this list was no accident. Every single card is carefully chosen. So I hope this list does well for you, and I hope that I do well today. <sighs> All right. If you're looking to support us, like, comment, subscribe. Those things are free and easy to do, and they help support us get into that YouTube algorithm. All that good stuff. I'm being very repetitive today. I'm sorry. Um... But yeah, and then you can click that join button next to the subscribe button. There you can find our membership info. You want a cyborg guide for this deck? That's how you get it. You become a middle tier member. You can also get badges, emotes, donation decks, all that good stuff. So definitely check out our membership info. You can go directly to the epicstorm.com slash donation decks to submit your combo deck and be featured here on this very YouTube channel. 
theapexfirm.com for your card singles as well as Sweet Sweet Storm merchandise and our mini token pack for keeping track of your mana and storm. Whew. All right, I'm finally done. Let's head on over to match number one and I can show you how great this deck list is. Hopefully, see there. Match number one. Let's get it. All right, so we've opened up Grazer. We have Blast Zone. We have Scrying for Lotus. This hand's amazing. We're going to keep. Honestly, and this is going to sound silly, this is one of the best post-breach lists that I've ever played. Um, and I, it's weird because like everyone thinks that Lotus is really bad right now. This list is very, very strong. All right, so we've let off on Grazer Island. Okay. So not one out of, we're not going to get to showcase uh, how effective... The running volleys are in that matchup, but we do get to play scrying for field right or yeah for field right here. Player field, sacrifice these, and pass the turn. Next turn we're probably just playing brawl. You could uh barely get recovery back the blast zone in case they have a main deck narset, but I think I just want to play the brawl. Lava coil, so I am not playing the brawl. Not yet at least. Alright, so let's play a Balagad. And I'm actually going to Balagad back the Sylvan Scrying here so I can go get uh, Thespian Stage. So next turn I can play Scrying. I can go get Stage and Copy. I don't care about thinking. Fiery Impulse, okay. We're gonna play Scrying. Go get our Stage. Play Stage and then Copy your Lotus. That gives us seven mana. If our opponent taps out, and I doubt that they will, but if they do, I can play Brawl into Pour, into Pour, into Peer, and easily win. Okay, so this is three mana, four mana. What is it? Bruise. Well, they're cruising for a bruising because we just won. All right, so blue. Let's cast this Brawl and go to Combo Town. Population us. Four of the pages. Sorry, Stan. Right. And our opponent is just snap conceded. Wow. Okay. Well, we were going to win this game anyway. So we have one mana floating and then these fields. And from here, I would actually pour one more time before I peered, which sounds a little bit silly. But the reason why is with two floating mana, if I for some reason don't hit a single hidden strings, I can hit a... Uh, a vizier and then i can untap my lotus field that way into something like shimmer without having to worry about fizzling so i would cast a pour and then i would cast peer all right we've won game number one probably want this niv especially against the blue deck i don't really like grazer here you can board in rending volley but i think mystical disputes probably just better uh if you're trying to answer a thing in the ice so this is how i'm going to board Oh, so notice how cleanly that board mapped? Not an accident. Okay, our opponent's back. Uh, so we have double shimmer. This hand's probably fine. It's a little bit slow, but we are facing a blue deck. I would not keep this hand against something like Winota. So we get to play Turbo and Balagad. Ooh. All right, change of plan. I'm going to play the Triumph. So the reason I'm playing Triumph over Balagad on turn one is that this gives me Wish on turn three for lotus field untapped that's a quick thing in the ice okay Ooh, i'm liking that okay so let's just find lotus here shimmer we'll take the scrying okay so at this point we just want to find hidden strings and stay alive and another thing in the ice okay come on no spell pierce Field and scrying Ding. All right, player field. We didn't really need another Thespian stage, but we'll live. All right, press of iteration. So I definitely want a hidden strings. That's what I'm looking to draw. I would also take one of our mystical disputes because by the way that our opponent's tapping, I have this suspicion that they're sitting on disputes. Right, they're just casting it again. So they're looking to just crash in next turn for 14. Because they can't 
play the card off of the iteration this turn. Opt. Ooh, we hit a dispute. I love it. All right. So one of the nice things about Mystical Dispute, much like Running Volley, is we can cast this and copy our Lotus Field. So one mana spells are very good in this archetype. Considers pretty good for them. Let's just auto yield to this. Why not? Oh, that is brutal. Oh, wow. I think we just lost. I, I, in the intro, I was just talking about how I haven't seen an Alpine Moon in, for, Alpine moon in forever. Jeez. Well, we do have a Blast Zone, but I'm not going to be able to outrace these thing in the ice. We're just done. That would have been amazing, too. Ah. This person must hate combo. They conceded game one really early and then had Alpine Moon. Um, yeah, I'm just not going to be able to win this. All right, let's go to the next one. No need to waste time. All right, so that lets me know that I should maybe not slam Lotus as early and may maybe sandbag it a little bit. Okay. This is fine. We'll keep this. We have Wish for Lotus, um, and we have... Shimmer for Lotus as well. So strange to see an Alpine Moon these days. All right, Valley Good Pass. Okay, Shimmer. They have Dispute? Okay, Opt. Shimmer. I'll take the Blast Zone. Get some protection from the uh, Alpine Moon. There's Thing in the Ice, yep. Hmm. No red source here is a tiny bit awkward. So I'm going to play Thespian Sage, which allows me to copy the mountain. And then next turn I can play Wish into Lotus. That hurts. Yep. So uh, they've drawn a few Haymakers in the post board games. We're not out of this yet by any means. The gate. Okay. So let's copy the mountain. Hmm. Probably better. I wonder if I should play. Yeah, I think that this is probably better. We're all scrying. Because I can just wish for Fry and kill the Narset that way. Okay. The Narset. Curse of Iteration. Mm hmm. Fire Bluff Canal, sure. Technically, I could actually kill the Narset with my Baral right now. All right, I need to think about this. Um, what's the best way I can go about this? Let's tap Thing in the Ice and then tap their pathway. Yes. Yes, and then yes, we're going to Cypher onto our Brawl. Ooh, uh, the Cypher's not actually going to work here. Uh, I just realized. Because Cypher says damage to a player. That might be fine, though. Um, trying to think here. So if I copy this, attack them, then I could wish for... Okay, I think I've got it. Let's attack them. And now this resolves. We can untap our fields. Yes, yes. Okay, so now let's tap this for colorless, this for red. Let's wish. And let's get Fry. Fry the Narset. And I'm going to cycle the Vizier right now just to see if I can spike something good. Untap. Would love a hidden strings. Nope. Okay, so the question is, do I want to kill the thing in the ice? Or I can wish for dig. And I think I like dig here. But I don't want to exile the fry. I can exile shimmer. Frying land. Balagad. Vizier. 
I can't do anything with the blue mana. I like pour and dispute. Those are both fine. Alright, and I have to pass the turn now. We know that my opponent still has a negate in hand. Fable Passage. Sure. Goodbye, Baral. It's been real. And Hidden Strings will be exiled. Okay. So, what do we want to do here? Playing the Div Mizzet actually isn't that good because the thing in the ice is about to flip. So I think what we can do is just cast the pour and see if they'll negate it and then we can dispute. Okay, so we've disputed the negate. That flips. And now we can safely play the Niv. Another pour, okay. Let's cast another pour here, just because the Niv doesn't... We can't cast anything post-Niv. We have two available mana. So now we can Niv into Shimmer. I don't know how much I actually like that, but it's an option. Or we can Veil Cut Awakening. So I could Awakening for five, keeping the Niv in hand. Or I can Niv into Shimmer. I think I want Awakening just because, like, we haven't found any hidden strings yet. So I like my odds of hitting a strings off five cards. Okay, draw. There's strings. Okay, and by the way, Niv Mizzet works very, very well with Veilcut Awakening because they are all draws. Okay, so we can play stages of land here. So this brings me up to. Seven mana, down to five mana, nine mana, which is exactly enough to Niv into Valakut. I don't know if I want to do that, though. Hmm. Okay, so it's five mana. Red. Oh, don't cast that, please. Okay, here we go. Niv. I guess I actually have mana floating, so now I think I do want a Veil Cut Awakening. I thought I would have been tapped out, but I guess I just can't count mana. Um, so I want to get rid of the Dispute. So I can only deal 4 damage. So I don't know if I want to target their Horror or if just targeting them. I think targeting them is a little bit safer. Okay, and now let's bottom all 3 of these. Now we draw four and hit them for four. All right, so hidden strings here. A uh, little bit risky because I can't actually cast this pier. Uh, but we do get to draw a card off the Niv. So if I hit a, like a Vizier or a Balagad Recovery, we would be good. But the upside of casting is that I could have Mystical Dispute up, so I think that's why I'm going to do it. And if we do hit Vizier, I don't need Mana Floating. Ooh, Shimmer was good. Uh, because Pure will just machine gun my opponent with the Niv Mizzet. So if we shimmer into Head and Strings, we get to machine gun. And I really want to do it, so let's hit it. Alright, shimmer. No machine guns. Um, so I can scrying to ping my opponent again, but then I leave Dispute uh, unable to cast. So I think I'm actually just going to pass here. So close to just winning right there. Do I care about that? I'm going to let that go. So I'm letting that go because next turn I have Mystical Dispute with Pure back up. And my opponent's just conceded. So I would have gotten to Machine Gun my opponent. Uh, mystical Dispute with Pure back up. Pure with Mystical Dispute back up, let's say it correctly. But I would have gotten to Machine Gun my opponent if they didn't concede. We have defeated the Alpine Moon opponent. Hopefully that's the only Alpine Moon we see in this league. Uh, it's not very common anymore, but we got match number one over Blue Red. I would like to call it Phoenix, but we didn't actually see Phoenix. There's none in the discard card, so I'm just probably going to call it Blue Red Control. Um, but cool, cool, cool. 1-0. Match number two. We've opened up a hand on the draw where if we spike land number two, I don't think we can lose, but we have to spike land number two. It's super risky. I have two chances. I'm going to take it. So I've added two lands to the deck. I'm just hoping for the best here. 
All right, so we, we have 22 lands, 20 uh, left in deck. That's a land, unlike Dig Through Time. I'm going to play that. Right there, seeing a payoff for a decision I made. So this does not cast the Sylvan Scrying, but it does play Brawl, and it does play Lotus Field, which can cast the Scrying for stage later. Now we're seeing an Opt, and this is actually Is It Phoenix. They missed their second land drop. They peer. Trying to decide if I actually want to play out the Brawl right now. I think the answer is yes. Okay. And they hit the land. Lava coil away my brawl. And there's the green source. Um, I think I'm just going to play the field. Next turn we can Sylvan Scrying for stage and play the stage. But it doesn't do us a whole lot of good. We, we can't play and copy unless we draw a Vizier. You could burn the strings. I just don't think that's the best use of your cards. So I don't really want to do that. Our actual best draw on our turn would be Vizier, because Vizier would allow you to cast Sylvan, go get stage, and copy all in one swift motion. Another sweet thing about playing Valakut Awakening, by the way, is you play it as a land, you sack it to Lotus, you can then Valaged Recovery back the Valakut Awakening later on to use it as a combo card. So you do get a lot of like unique functionality. Boom! Don't even need that scrying anymore! I guess that was actually our best draw. Uh, I'm just going to copy this now. Just in case they're a crazy person that plays Field of Ruin. No need to bluff Mystical Dispute in game one. And another opt. We're ready to go to Party Town on our turn. Land number four from our opponent. Thing in the ice, okay. And another peer. Okay, let's start off on strings. Yes, yes, no. Blue, red. Let's play Wish. They just snap resolved. Okay, so now we can pour. All right, I think we've got them. We can discard the scrying. And in strings. What this allows us to do is now we can peer with a bunch of mana floating and Mystical Dispute back up. There's our peer. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Let's cycle. Now this is an opponent that isn't conceding, so we actually get to execute the combo, which I enjoy doing, so I don't mind. Uh, it's just our round one opponent was very quick to hit that concede button. All right. So untap here. Let's play a Brawl. And then Hidden Strings. And if our opponent has Removal Spell, we do have Dispute up still. 20 cards left in deck. Let's, um... Here, all right, we have another Strings. Okay. So I'm going to Peer again, just because it's a draw 10. And I have Dispute up, so there's no way my opponent can kill us. Uh, cycle this Vizier. Drawing your deck to win every single game is honestly a blast. Like, if you don't enjoy this, you're probably dead inside. Uh, just because it is a lot of fun. Okay. Or again. Tap these. Discard that. Why not? So we have three cards left in deck. Vizier makes a mana, so let's do that. Okay, two cards left. Whoops, not trying to... I guess I can cast Wish. Okay. Oh, I did have a pour. That would have been better to cast. I can't cast it now or else I deck myself. Okay, so now I have a bunch of backup. And I can cast Oracle. Shimmerland. Alright, and that is game number one. So the blue red deck again, let's bring in Niv and the Disputes. Get rid of these grazers. What I so I do like about this list that Pierce just game over. Um 
in the same way that ultimatum was but with this list brawl works really well with peer it does not work at all with ultimatum and wish doesn't work with ultimatum so this list is really coherent because brawl works with wish and peer but wish on turn three to play lotus like there's just so much synergy in this deck list um, and that's one of the big things that I like here is everything is super powerful at most stages of the game. One of the things with the ultimatum list is that's not true, but on top of running ultimatums like you would in these pure slots, you have dead cards. I don't want to say dead cards, but you have slots like uh, omniscience that just aren't very good unless you're winning. And I don't want to play those cards. Like I just like cards that are more flexible uh, and good in general. Okay, so we have double dispute. I think I'm gonna try this. Not sure if I want to play the Valakut Awakening or sit on it to potentially use it to draw into a Lotus field later. I'm gonna start on the Sanctum because if they play a turn two thing in the ice, I can dispute it. Better. Crackling Drake to the graveyard. So this is just like blue red dragons, maybe. I mean, this must be a recent thing because I haven't seen a bunch of dragons in the list. Okay, and they're passing. Okay, so it is still... There's Crackling Drakes in the deck that we faced. And honestly, this looks a lot like the list around one opponent was playing too. They probably just boarded out the uh, Phoenix combo part. Another Balagad. All right, I'm going to play this as a land and pass. No point in playing out the Brawl. Playing Brawl leaves you shields down to Narset, and I'm not looking to do that. So maybe our round one opponent was Is It Phoenix? Or Is It Dragons, if you would like to call it that. There's Sprite Dragons on the board, but there's not really any, like, dragon cards in the deck. Like, um, why, can, why can't I think of it? The Scorch Dragonfire or... Not Dragon Breath. The one that deals three to a creature and player. I'm so bad with card names. Especially for, like, newer cards. Okay. Here. I'm just going to play this as a blue source so that way I have double the speed up if I need it. There's no real point in playing out Brawl here. Just begging for it to die. Okay, Fable Passage. What is that? Oh no. Oh no, you don't get to have that. And if they dispute back, we have dispute. No, and then we'll counter the nurse it again. That is why I played a second blue source last turn instead of playing the Valakut Awakening or even the Balagad. Get out of here! Get that nurse that crap out of here. No one likes that. Okay, so we still don't have a stage or lotus. I'm beginning to wonder if like I should play the veil cut in case we draw wish. I can just slam wish for field. But I was I would also like to cast the veil cut awakening, getting rid of some of these other cards. Hmm. I think I'm gonna play brawl. All right. Press of iteration. One of the reasons that I played out Brawl is if it happens to live, I can play poor on our turn. And if it doesn't, I have a backup Brawl that I can slam. Consider, and they kept the card, it looks like. Or no, they must have binned it because of the steam vents. Let's get in there. Let's bail, get back a dispute. Aether Gust, okay. Uh, I'm gonna put that on the bottom. I don't really like that. Um, yeah, playing the long game here. When I had six cards, I feel like I'm behind a little bit at the moment. Bruise, yikes. Okay, we have seven in hand. Thing in the ice, sure. Still three cards up. Try. All right, we're all down. So I could play poor here. I don't know if I want to, but I could. And what that would achieve is they could only have dispute here, I think. Um, three disputes in the most recent list. 
So there's probably two. So there's two left somewhere in their deck. I think I'm just going to risk the poor trying to spike a field. Do you have it? They do. All right. I took a chance. It didn't pan out. Okay. So I don't think we're going to get this one. And another cruise. Yeah. They're doing the Xerox thing very well. Okay. Now we fall to 13. All right. I'm just going to go to game three. I'm not coming back here. And I'm not going to change how I board. Like, my board plan is fine. I just... I just didn't get there. Sometimes you lose game. And on the play, game number three, match two. The sand seems great. Deep. Okay. Island. Draw. So if I play Lotus Field on turn two, I leave myself open to Narset. So I'm not super thrilled on just jamming field on turn two. Or I'm sorry, turn three. I feel like it's kind of risky. So something else I could do is cycle Vizier and leave up field, but then they know that I have Mystical Dispute. So I don't love that. So I think what I'm going to do is just play a third land and pass. I don't care about that. You know what? I'm going to Dispute. That way I can play my field and just throw caution to the wind. We have Blast Zone for Narset. I'm going to pretend they don't have it. Okay. So you could cycle Vizier there preemptively. Uh, well, it looks like they don't have Narset anyway, so that worked out. So you could cycle Vizier preemptively to avoid Narset and then pretend that you have Dispute up, which could be a play, but you just lose a little bit of equity later. Now they're still holding up Dispute with this blue land drop. All right, so I could pour here into their Dispute. I think I'm going to cycle Vizier, see what my options are. Petria Triome. Cycle this. Wish, okay. Pass the turn. So Wish is interesting because theoretically it does give me a second Lotus Field in two turns. Uh, it's not quite Thespian Stage, but could be fine. Another thing. Okay. Ding. And I'm just going to copy. Pass the turn. They're just passing. Okay. Um, do I really want to jam here? Because they can have double counter up. I think I'm just going to play Blast Zone. Okay, and they're passing. So they just have a handful of counters. I'm going to add a counter onto Blast Zone and move it up to two. If I want to move it up to three for Narset later, I can. Draw. Vizier. Right, I'm going to pass. I just don't see a reason to jam here. Narset. So I'm going to add a counter. And now I'm going to cycle Vizier. Untap the Blast Zone, and now I can blow up the Narset on the end step. And they only have two uh, mana open, possibly three after a land drop. So I think that I'm going to be able to plow through this now. Blast Zones look pretty good this league. <laughs> Picked up a Consider. Well, I don't care about that. All right, and they have two open mana, which means one hard counter or... Um, double dispute, and I think I can beat both. Ooh, and Niv was a really good draw. Okay, so I think we're going to go to Party Town. Let's play off the stage. Now we can Hidden Strings through two lands. Hidden Strings is a protection spell. No, no, no. Switch phases. So I wonder how I'm supposed to do this. I think what I'm supposed to do is because I could four, which makes one mana, and then I can play 
honestly, I don't know if it matters. I think I'm supposed to hit in strings first. Because I go up to 7 to 11 mana. And then pour. Yeah, it's better to hit in strings and then uh, niv into pour. Because you get the extra draw triggers off niv it. Alright, so tap for triple red. Play niv. And now we play pour. And start machine gunning. Okay. Save targets. Auto yield again. So now this is going to deal them an extra three. Untap here. Um, I guess the land. I don't think it really matters that much. Let's shimmer trying to hit another uh, hidden strings. Third wish. We're mana short on four. And the Balagat is a mana short of getting back hidden strings. So I think what we're actually going to do here is wish for Rending Volley. And we just take the pour. Okay, so now we get to draw a card off wish. Oh, and there's the hidden strings. Oh, so I guess if I was super greedy and played the Sylvan Scrying, I could have done something, but I don't think that's the right play. So let's just Rending Volley the thing. And now I feel like we're really far ahead. Okay. So the opponent's using Fable Passage. Even if they have like Fry into Narset here, I'm feeling pretty good. Like if they play Fry into Narset, sure, I lose my Niv Mizzet. But I can just like wish for Fry and then go off. Are you really passing? That is not good for you, friend. Okay. So we got to deal them an extra damage. What is this? Aether Gust? Woohoo! Are we gonna get to kill our opponent with Valkut Awakening right now? Please let this be something. Valkut Awakening for the win? <laughs> oh no, did it resolve? Or was that just the draw trigger? Oh, they're letting Valkut resolve? It's game. Oh no, okay. Um, so I don't have any instants, so that gets countered. Now we can put Niv back on top of the deck. They're at four. Now they go to three. So let's add some red mana? I guess I don't have a dispute in the board, so there's no reason to do that. Um, said blue. Hidden strings. I'll pay three. You have another dispute? Okay. That's fine. So I don't think I want to do anything else because I just want to redraw the Niv. And I could shimmer to get the Niv in my hand now, but that's not really a great line. And I don't want to sell them to shuffle away the Niv. All right, so the opponent's down to four cards. What do they have? Cruise. That's a good one. Press of iteration. Sure. If you think back to how this game play, uh, played out, turn two countering thing in the ice ended up being very, very good. <laughs> Just like how long this game has gone. Uh, it would have been very different with a uh, 7-8 trying to eat my face. And another cruise, sure. Okay, so we're going to attempt to recast Niv, but I feel like by now they might have found another Aether Gust to buy some time. All right, so blue and red. Play Niv. If it resolves, we just go with Thespian Stage into Shimmer. And they are looking for the other Aether Gust, apparently. Okay, so Stage. So this gets a trigger, which puts them to two. Even if they found Fry here, Fry puts them to one. They did find Fry, so now what we can do is Balaged back the Niv. Why don't I have any way to deal one damage in this deck? I guess they go to two. My bad. Um, I think it's the Brawl. Now it's just Balaged back the Niv. And discard is crying. 
impressive iteration. Okay. I mean, a way that our opponent could realistically win this game now is if they had uh, Crackling Drake or Crackling Drake, Crackling Drake, uh, plus a way of disrupting our Niv. It's just because, look at their Exile Pile. It's pretty big. 14 cards. So they're getting to the point where that Drake ends up becoming close to lethal, especially if they're like playing a way of giving it haste. Uh, I doubt they are, but or there apparently is a maximized velocity in this deck, so that's one way that they could do it. So, 14 plus a bunch of this stuff. Some of these are lands, though, and, like, Planeswalkers. So it's not exactly 20 yet, but that's their game plan. That was an amazing draw. Okay, so Niv. And now we just play strings, and if they try to kill Niv in response, they're dead. But I guess they wouldn't be because they haven't drawn the card yet, so that's not true. Do you have another fry? And another fry. Okay. Um, so they go to one. We did draw another Balagad. Do you have a counter for hidden strings? They do. Okay. Um, two mana up here. Five cards in hand. I don't want to play the Balagid yet, just because it's sort of representing lethal here. And I'm a, sort of afraid of playing the Brawl, because I don't want to, to get countered by Dispute. Like, it's kind of just like a worthless play. So instead, what I think I'm going to do here is make another Lotus Field, and then play Lotus Field, and just have a bunch of mana going into next turn. And then next turn, I can play Balagid on niv -Mizzet. There's the Drake. 18, so Maximize Velocity probably kills me here. Did they leave it in? Oh, they're passing. Okay. So let's try to be mana efficient here. Let's play Baral to start, just because it makes the Balaged only cost two. Balaged on Niv Mizzet. Dispute. How many disputes have I seen? Um, not a lot. Actually, I don't think I've seen any. So I'm going to cast Veilcut Awakening in response here. If this resolves, I think I might put everything other than the... I guess maybe I keep one wish. Interesting. Seems like a weird time to do that, but I'll take it. All right, so... We know now that the Balged will resolve. I'm going to put back at least these. The question is, do I want to put back the other Wish? And I think the answer is no, because it gives me a backdoor of Wish into Rending Volley in case I can't win. All right, so I'm going to draw four here. And I hit my Dispute. I'm going to cycle, untap field. Eight minutes left. I don't need to rush this. So that gets back Niv. Um, what can I do here? So I have seven, eight, nine mana, which is enough to play Niv into Wish. The so red, blue, so Niv, and then Wish. And Wish for lethal. Boom! That's pretty exciting. That was a really good match. Uh, and we are now 2-0 and oh with three rounds left to go. I told you this list was good. Let's see if we can face something that isn't blue red uh phoenix i guess even though we haven't really seen those yet round three coming up we are on the play let's get it match number three we have grazer we have one land ah i'm gonna hate myself i'm gonna keep this this hand has the reward of hitting a land as my first draw step into turn two grazer into turn three cycle copy stage like i just have to make one hit here it's a little bit risky i'm aware uh don't follow my example because i'm probably never going to draw another land and lose but <sighs> and another blue deck and there's the miss land drop okay sensor so they're probably on blue white oh i don't know anything 
and no land here. Ah, oh, gross. Um, I think I just discard the grazer now. Okay, so they're on rogues. Or blue green flash would make more sense actually. Ah, uh, I knew that this hand was risky. I was just hoping. That, like, if you hit this hand, was amazing. But I guess I should have just been more disciplined and mulliganed. Okay. Yep, that's enough for me. Let's just, ah. I guess I should just sit here and take some lumps to look at more of my opponent's deck. Another one of that thing? Sure. Alright, so we fall the 14 with this attack stop. Draw. This is just painful. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've just seen enough at this point. We can go to the next game. <clears throat> and they revealed their hand. Well, thank you for the information. Double blink of an eye, brazen borrower, gear hulk. Interesting. Okay. Um, honestly, borrower doesn't seem that bad. Or not borrower, uh, grazer. Like, I could bring in the disputes in the niv. Yeah, it's probably just right to do this, and maybe I'll learn how to mulligan properly. Right now it just looks like blue green flash. The trio might not actually have a red splash to it. I was just so intoxicated by that hand. It was so close to just being the nuts. That said, going six draw steps, I think it was, without hitting a land, a little bit unreasonable. Because even if you missed one, that hand was still fine. Like, if you miss your first one, hit on your second... You graze her into Lotus Field and then, like, you're off to the races. That would have been fine. Um, so, like, it's not that you needed to hit on the first one. Honestly, even the second or third draw step could have been okay. It's just that we didn't hit on any of them. Okay, game two. So this gets me Lotus. This is a keep. All right. Bill, could Awakening looking better than Dig Through Time right here? That's for sure. Right, breeding pool. Prime's okay. Play that out. So next turn we can play stage into shimmer. And then turn after that wish into lotus. And let's shimmer. If we hit lotus off this, I can use the wish, you know, as an action spell later on. Growth spiral, okay. We hit the field. How lucky. Cycling sensor. Good deal for me. Alright, the scrying's kind of a bad draw. I don't actually want it at this point in the game. I guess it could always get like Blast Owner or the other cycling land. Sack these two. Yes. Another spiral. And they hit the land this time. Passing the turn. Let's shimmer again, see if it resolves. I think I want the dispute here. And then let's try to scrying. I kind of want the scrying to get countered. And if it doesn't, we get another stage or the cycle land. Just have a buttload of mana. I think that's probably the plan here. I'm not like dying, so let's just keep on leveling up and making more lotus fields. <coughs> Okay. That's a good flashback target for the Gear Hulk. I'm just going to pass here. And they are playing red for what it's worth. Sure. I don't care about that. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to fall to 16. And our opponent has 7 cards. Alright, let's... Copy field. They get another wolf. Sure. All right, so now we go to our turn, and this is probably a turn where I want to go. Great draw. All right, so let's start off by cycling Vizier, get the most cards possible. And then I think I'm going to play a Wish to see if, <clears throat> excuse me, if they'll bite down on countering it. Hmm. Unfortunate. Okay. I guess I don't need to tap that field. That can stay untapped. 
When you have four of them, you don't need to tap an extra one for no reason. Okay. Let's pour. Could have been better. Um, but the bright side is that I can barely get recovery something back. And the strings is decent. Pour again. Here, that's pretty good. Discard the Sanctum, player land for the turn. I think I'm going to Shimmer looking for another counter. Take another pour. This brings me down to 32 cards, so the pier would be a draw 16. I love the Brawl. Honestly, we have so much mana that I could lose the fight over pier and then battle get it back and pier again. <laughs> Okay, let's try to resolve Pier. And our opponents had enough. Okay. So they just didn't have anything in hand, I think. Let's uh, try it again. Pretty good hand, I'll keep this. I like that Lotus Field card. Triome. I think I want to keep the recovery around, so I don't think I want to play that as a land. That was a good draw. Do I want to play in a sensor though? I think I'm going to just because like if they censor it, I can always battle get this back. And if they don't have it, I get to go way ahead. Sure. Like my concern was that if I don't play in a sensor, they play that 2-2 flash. And right now my hand's kind of slow. So I'd like to also slow them down. Niv is a pretty good one. Um Actually, I think I'm going to take this a little bit slower. Let's just bell get back the scrying. Okay. And now next turn I can scrying and play the Lotus. For a spiral. Okay, do you have the flash creature? I do. Alright, that's five mana. So then now they can play Gear Hulk if they have it. I think the instant costs six, if I remember correctly, or maybe it's seven. Drying. Okay. This is a little bit greedy. I think I'm going to sack the Blast Zone. Because I can't cast Niv off the Blast Zone where I'm pretty close to casting it as is. Alright, so they have one card in hand. So next turn I can Hidden Strings into Niv. Alright, so I'm falling to 14. So if I Hidden Strings... I'll have two blue floating. This taps for blue, this taps for red. Red. Blue. Play Niv. I don't know what their last card is, but I'm feeling okay right now. That's land six. So I think they can cast that blue-red card that they discarded before that taps two permanents and makes a 4-4. Four -four. I don't know if that's six or seven. All right, they're passing. That's a good sign. So now we get to deal one damage. Let's ping this creature. Yeah, Sylvan Scrying. And now we get to ping that creature again. So I could cast Veilcut Awakening here and try to machine gun. Or I can just copy my field. Um, I think copying field is just the safer play. Okay, pass the turn. What is the last card in your hand? Apparently not a good one. And they're passing, I think. Getting in there? Well, I'm not blocking. That seems like a trap. I'll take 12. Or I'll take 2 going to 12. That was the card I was thinking of. Apparently it's 8 mana. So maybe they have another one of that in hand, or they have Gear Hulk. Gear Hulk would actually make sense here. Yep, here it is. Okay, so um, I do have yeah, two permanents, make a 4-4, four, four, draw two. That card's really good. All right, so we're going to respond to that. We're going to cast Valakut Awakening, and hopefully we hit um, Mystical Dispute here. So I think this is, like, really risky, putting all these pores on the bottom. They can't tap field. 
Do I just want to put four on the bottom and draw five new ones? Like, putting three pores on the bottom is really risky, so I think I'm going to keep one. All right, so let's draw four. That could have been better. Deal one there. Okay. That's kind of crummy, actually. So they can tap our Niv. And then make a 4-4 four, four and draw two. Um, or a Gear Hulk. Because I think I can wish for Running Volley to kill the Gear Hulk. Draw. Or a Gear Hulk again. Still trying to figure out how I want to do this. So if they have Mystical Dispute, I'm actually like in a lot of trouble. If I play out the Brawl first, I don't I don't think I'm supposed to play Brawl. Um, hmm. I mean, I get to get really far ahead if I play the Brawl. I just don't think that's the right move. Let's cast Wish. Draw. Ping. Them. Now I can Running Volley. Gear Hulk. Ping them. They tap land. Hope they don't kill me. I'm dead to another one of that card, I think, because it's four damage to any target. Yeah. So they can swing for four or deal me four. Never hit a mystical dispute in any of those cards. I think I'm dead here. Yep. Ah. Oh. That feels so bad. Damn it. I'm so now that I've lost, I'm questioning that Veil Cup play a little bit. Like maybe I'm supposed to just keep triple pour and not respond to anything. Probably would have been a better play than hoping to hit a dispute. I think this match was ultimately my own fault for one keeping that hand in game number one, and then maybe that Veil Cup play in game three. I think I'm probably supposed to just let it all resolve and then just pour uh, off of the two fields in Machine Gun. Yeah, I think I punted this. We're 2-1. and one. All right, match number four. I was thinking in between rounds about my options in that game, and I remember why I casted or cast uh, the Valakut Awakening. I was worried about my opponent drawing a dispute and countering my, um, my pour. I, that ended up being the rationale that I remembered. So I don't think our, our opponent hit the dispute. Then again, our Veil Cut Awakening also stunk. So like, it was kind of bad. I, I, it's just not as bad of a play as I initially made it out to be because I forgot that I was playing around Mystical Dispute. Um, I don't know. Still kind of a tough beat. But we're just going to look to win this round instead. And we've opened up a quick mulligan here. Opposite problems. Uh, we're going to keep this one, though, and bottom the pier. So this is similar to another hand that we opened, where we have Valakut Awakening for Red for Wish, play two stages into Lotus Field. Is this the mirror match? It is, and we've opened up a painfully slow hand. I don't think we're going to get this one. We're in trouble. Okay. Grays are not exactly a great draw here. Temple and Shimmer. Okay. Like I said, we have a very slow hand here. So our opponent should crush us as long as they can find Lotus Field at this point. That's a field. Being on the draw and they had Grazer. So Grazer is one of the easiest ways that you can get ahead in the mirror because it's like having time walk in your deck. You're just a turn ahead of your opponent. So they got to be on the play and having Grazer is just such a blowout, especially into this on turn three. So I think what I'm supposed to do here is play Vizier in case I spike a Lotus Field. I mean, we're probably just dead, but have to make them go through it. Guarded Yavamaya Coast. Plenty of mana. Shimmer floating two green. Hidden strings, sure. They'll get back the four, and now they're casting four again, so they'll have one floating mana. So it is seven mana, but it's not seven mana that casts ultimatum if they're on the ultimatum belt. Okay, 
right, so I think that does give them ultimatum mana now if they have it. So this is pure with one floating. That's not good enough if it is pure. Okay, that is good enough for pure. So they've only used one hidden string, so it's pretty unlikely that they fizzle. Or no, this is ultimatum. Okay. Because I think ultimatum is three, requires three more green than, than what they have floating right now. There's one color that requires three, and I think it's green. Mastermind. That's not what I expected. Okay, so what are you getting? From outside the game, they selected. Niv Mizzet. That's an interesting choice. Okay. Um, we did not draw a Lotus. I can fry this, I think. They'll get to draw two. Cast a wish. Yep. Okay, now we fry. I want a fry coming up uh, quite a bit in this league. Need to hope that their hand doesn't do anything, but I don't think that's very likely. And we just gave up our way of getting uh, Lotus Field as well. For all. I feel like our opponent's on a pretty old list, if I'm being honest. Like, the coasts aren't very common. The Masterminds, Brawl, like, this is a little bit older tech. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but just a little odd. Okay. So pretty much the only way we win this is if our opponent blanks. All right, so seven mana. If this is pure, they have pure with one floating, which is enough to hit in strings into the win. Okay. They should be able to piece together a win here. All right. I'm going to save some clock time. because I'll be honest, our opponent's playing a little bit slow, and I don't feel like sitting here. So I'm just going to concede this one. They're going to find a way to win with seven floating mana and 20 cards in hand. So we can just go ahead to the next one. So we do want these disputes. I think we're supposed to board out the Valor Cuts here. Like, we want the Grazers because they get you ahead, and I think you're honestly allowed to board out Blast Zone. It's not very good. In the, like, other than being a land, it's not very good. So maybe you can keep in one Val Cut instead. Um, and then maybe board out like one Grazer. Let's try this. On the play. Sure. A little bit slow again. Our opponent takes a mulligan. Now to five. So we have a couple interesting things about this hand. We can use Triumph for Red for the Wish, but we have the Sylvan Scrying. Our opponent's going to four cards now. Um, so we can use the Catcher of Triumph for Wish for Lotus Field, which means that we might want to consider getting Stage with the Scrying, so that way we have both up front. And then we can Hardcast Vizier on turn three. So it's turn two, Sylvan Scrying for Stage, turn three, Stage Vizier, turn four, Wish. Uh, into Lotus Field, and then I can even untap the Lotus Field if I have something to cast. All right, so let's go get Stage. And they have Scrying for Field. Yep. Draw. And his strings was a good draw here. All right, so we're going to play Vizier. We might be able to go off next turn. There is Field. I think if we want to go off next turn, we need a really good draw. Because in my head, I don't I'm trying to do the math and I don't think we can. Uh so three mana. So they have another stage for um or fill and scrying for stage. For a mulligan to four, their hand's pretty good. Um so we tap these three and that plays Lotus. <clears throat> and then you can untap Lotus. Yeah, I think we're just short here. I don't think we're gonna be able to win. Just because our payoff is pure. Okay, um, untap this cycle, draw, okay, that didn't really quite work the way I wanted it to, we're going to have two mana floating, 
Yes. Ooh, maybe I just messed up. Okay, so there was a really small thing I could have done here that would have been good. Um, do I want to cipher? I think the answer is yes. So the reason that I messed up is I should have targeted stage and then the vizier, and I would have had enough mana to copy stage. And then attack and untap both lotus fields. I couldn't peer, but I could wish into dig. Which would have given me mystical. I guess that doesn't. I could have had to like dig into mystical dispute if I needed it this turn. Yep. All right, and they're passing. All right, blue, black doesn't matter. Here, and then untap lotus field. The only way we can lose this game now is if we misclick. So let's just not do that. Cast. Yes. Yes. Burl. Strings. 23 cards left in deck. Cycle Vizier. Do we have another peer? No peer. All right, let's cast Pour. They've gone. They did the nice thing. That's fine. All right, so on the draw, I do think we want another Grazer. On the play, I think you can get away without having it. And maybe we cut the Awakening. Just like a pretty clean list at this point. Not a lot to keep that. Hmm. They kept seven, too. Ah. So, turn one, we'd play this tap. Turn two, Sanctum into Brawl. Turn three, Shimmer plus something else. I think a five might be better. All right, so let's get rid of the Grazer and Vizier. This is like a fine five. Okay. So, I could dispute that. I just, I don't know. I don't think you're supposed to. I think you're supposed to save dispute for like a bigger moment. All right, so now we're gonna play Brawl. And hopefully dispute something with the Brawl so I can convert this Grazer into something that doesn't stink. Another Shimmer. Come on, no Lotus Field. I mean, they kept seven. They probably have a field, but. Especially after seeing eight extra cards. Come on, no field. No field! Oh. All right. So the question is whether or not we're supposed to Shimmer or hold up Dispute, and I think it's supposed to be just be Shimmer. I guess we don't have to make that uh, decision now. That's good. Um, so what we can do here is play the Sanctum, play the Grazer, play Field. All right, we need a payoff spell now. Next turn, we can copy Lotus Field and Hold Open Dispute. Don't kill me. Hey, I like that. I put one card on top. I don't like that. That is not good for me. Interesting. I wonder if it's like a scrying or something going to go get the field. Four mana. Are you going off with just two lands? Are you... Maybe they're the Emergent build? That is six mana? So then a Vizier puts them up to seven? I might be dead here. Niv? Okay. A little bit painful. What am I supposed to do here? So part of me is like... I think I'm supposed to hold up Dispute, but if I do, I want a card that's bad that I can discard in case I draw into a good card, but then I miss my land drop. So it's a, that's what I've been thinking about. It's a tough choice here. And now I have to find Fry off of Wish again. Um, so my Brawl is going to be dead next turn. I think this Niv might just take over the game. I'm not sure what they're doing here. Dig through time. I'm going to let that go. 
So I need to let it go because if they're sandbagging a hidden strings, I just get demolished. And this brawl's gonna die anyway this turn. So I think like the slim chance that I can win is if our opponent just like moves to attack steps, I block with Grazer and then they pass. All right, so this is a window where I get the um, the brawl trigger that I should actually hold on. It doesn't work. So I'm not going to get the brawl trigger here. My bad. And now they know that I have dispute in hand. But also, I think the brawl would have died before um, the dispute trigger would have worked anyway. So I got punished for holding this land. Now I'm going to block with the grazer. Oh, they didn't attack. Okay. Need to get very, very lucky in order to win now. Okay, we're at 20. That's a good start. Okay. At some point, I'm going to have to answer this nib this turn. All right, so Hidden Strings resolves, and now we cast Pour. Okay. I think we just discard the stage. The Viziers aren't spells, so they don't get a ping on me. Brawl? Brawl's interesting, but I don't know if it's actually good enough here. Okay, so I'm going to cast the Balagad to back poor. Now they're going to shoot the Brawl. Ooh, they still targeted me. Okay. Still going at me. I like this. Because at some point, it's a lot easier to wish. There we go. We don't need double peer. All right, so now we cast wish. Now we get fry. You could have killed the brawl. You chose to keep targeting me. Get that out of here. All right, so we have five mana floating. So we can go up to eight mana. We used one hidden strings. You're targeting us. And then we'll have two blue floating. So I can have hidden strings plus dispute. Cycle Vizier. Actually, I can play a land. Cycle Vizier. And uh, we got it. Our mulligan to five was good enough. Nah, eh, eh. Yes, I would love to draw another card. All right. Untap. Make some more mana. We have 18 cards left in deck. Okay. Bunch of mana. Cast pour. Card of land. 15 cards left. Pour. Untap. Discard a land. My opponent just said I am very lucky. Ah, uh, that's funny. Uh, always blame your opponents for your decisions. That's uh, just good life advice. Okay. So we just need to finish winning here. All right, just to be a good joker, I'm going to peer my opponent, make them uh, feel like they had a chance. All right. Let's shimmer. Get Balagad. Get poor. Poor again. Untap. We have four cards left in deck. Fail to get back the poor. Cast poor. This will put us to one card in deck. Discard a land. Busy or not busy or hidden strings. And then cycle Vizier to get the last card out of the deck. Now cast Wish. Wish. And at this point, I, I realize that I'm dunking on my opponent, but uh, I want to. So here we are. Okay, and now we cast Oracle. 3 1. We won the mirror. One round left to go. We have yet to face Winota. Maybe in match number five. Who knows? But uh, I would like a strong 4 and 1. That would make me happy. 
Let's see if we can get it. The final match, match number five. We're on the draw, and I'm going to keep this. We have access to Lotus Field with Scrying. We have a Veil Cut Awakening. What's not to love? Except for the fact that this hand's a little bit slow. So if our opponent's on Winota, they're probably going to steamroll us. But we're just going to play like they're not, and it will be fine. Island. Island makes this hand admittedly a little bit better. Okay, I think I'm going to play out the Sanctum. So I was originally thinking, like, I might play out Spire Bluff Canal to throw them off. But I actually want the Canal, I think, to cast the Awakening. It's weird. So I'm just trying to think, like, if I'm going to play Spire Bluff on early, it's going to get sacked to a potential Lotus Field. I don't know. I'm just, like, trying to think all these things through. And I don't know if anyone's going to buy the idea that I'm not playing Lotus Field anyway. Okay, chart of course. So this is Phoenix again. Third time this league. Last time uh, was triple Winona. This time it's uh, triple Phoenix. There's an Arclight Phoenix. So we're going to go get Lotus here. Or we can draw it. So now we're going to go get Stage instead. So I think it might actually be better here to play Stage Pass and Step Cycle Triumph on Tap Lotus Field Copy. Or you can also, instead of, uh, actually, that doesn't work. Never mind. I would have had to play Trial on turn one for that to work. Or play the Canal last turn. That's two spells. That's not enough for Phoenix to come back. If you had played Canal next turn, you could play Stage, and then this turn, uh, I'm sorry, you could play Stage and then Valkut Awakening instead of Cycling Trial. Draw's a very good draw. Um... I don't think I'm going to play it, though. The sequencing of lands this game, I'm not 100% sure I did it correctly. I think I was playing over-cautiously and missed some potential windows to do uh, some slightly better things. One of the most difficult things about playing newer, newer formats in general, standard, pioneer, less so modern, but uh, the sequencing of your lands in those formats is just like one of these uh, subtle skills that people overlook. Because the mana bases in Modern and Legacy are so good that you often don't have to think about them enough. And in Pioneer and Standard, they're not good, so they actually do matter quite a bit more. Okay. Thing in the ice, you got it. I'm just going to cycle Triome. Into another Sylvan Scrying that we don't want. Okay, we're just going to play Field... Copy field, check these two lands, and then next turn try to kill our opponent. Actually, we don't kill people. That's not what this deck does. We win the game. We do not kill our opponent. Uh, there's a pretty big distinction there. I mean, I guess I can kill my opponent. I have an it in my deck, but for the most part, I usually just win the game. So chart, of course, consider. So then one more spell, and they will have two hasty birds in play. And then uh, we'll get to uh, get them dead on our turn. And I love getting my opponent dead. Or us winning. Whatever you'd like to call it. All I'm saying is we're going to be going places. Bruising for a bruising. So two Firebirds are going to enter play. And then this thing will flip. Assuming that they play another spell here. So at 7. Time 13 will be at 7. One sea monster and two firebirds coming right on up. Ugh. Ouch. We're going to seven, and now we get to do our thing. All right, Spire Buff Canal. B Rawl, my favorite human wizard, I think. Probably. All right. So let's cast Poor. We're going to try to hang on to this Veil Cut Awakening as long as we can. Just because you want to uh, just basically get the most out of it. All right, let's tap this for green. And one of the nice things about Balagad here is when you have Brawl and a Pour, it's a break-even draw three. Like, you don't lose any mana, you just get to draw three, discard one. Okay, so you'll notice that that wasn't very good. This, we're about to see the power of uh, Veilcut Awakening, I think. 
Okay. So that wish was pretty good. We probably don't need to do the Valkup play anymore. Uh, because we could just peer instead. But I could probably do both. I have so much mana. Another Brawl. Right, we're going to keep the wish around, but I'm going to cast this anyway. So let's pretend we didn't draw the wish. All right, so this is just a draw seven. All right, and now we draw seven. We hit the pier. How lucky. 34 cards in deck. 33 cards in deck. So I probably didn't need to cycle the Viziers first, because technically I just made it so I drew one less card, but now I'm going to have a little bit of extra floating mana. It's all fine. Woot woot. Float some mana. Cast pour. Start a land. 13 cards left. Four. Well, I'm sorry that we didn't actually face Winota this league after I made a bunch of changes to make the matchup better. I don't really control who I get paired against, believe it or not. Even Brent Cook doesn't get to choose his opponents. But I am showcasing a little bit of the power of this list. Uh, the one round we lost, I think, could have been a win if I was just better at Magic. Not that we've won this round already. I'm just talking about the previous uh, four rounds. If I'm being completely honest, I'm just narrating because I need to fill uh, the audio while I'm comboing. Because if you're not talking, stuff gets cut. All right, let's get the Triome. Hidden Strings. Five cards left. We have 20 floating mana. What can someone do with 20 floating mana? Cast a bunch of cards. All right. Uh, green. Get back poor. All right, five cards about to be two. Shimmer. Shimmer. And Oracle. Woot woot. We did it. All right, game number one over Phoenix. Now these uh, grazers can go. The green beast. Bring back the disputes and the Niv. So, like I mentioned in round number one, you can board in Running Valley, but like, I just think the disputes are generally better here. Uh, I don't think killing thing in the ice is that important, and they're gonna have their own counter magic, and it's just good to have dispute to uh, fight back. All right, no Lotus, but this hand's pretty good. I'm gonna try this. My current plan is turn one Balagad Recovery, turn two Sanctum, maybe play a Brawl. See if we can draw a Sylvan Scrying or a Shimmer. Or even just Lotus itself. And Niv tends to be pretty good here. Another Balagad. Over Falls. Okay. Probably playing Brawl this turn unless we draw something good. Well, that is something good, but I'm still playing Brawl. I love the Lotus Field Rip. Any Disputed? No! All right. That's actually just fine, if I'm being honest. So they played a third land. This could be Narset this turn. If it is, then I might make this play anyway. I'm going to play Stage into Vizier. Piece of the puzzle. Okay. So they did hit a Firebird and then chart a course at Iteration. Okay, I'm going to play out the Vizier. So next turn we'll have three mana plus six mana. That's not the correct colors to cast Niv though. So if I drew like a hidden strings, we could probably do some damage. Press of iteration. Theme vents, sure. Opt. We got it. So it's subtle, but like this Vizier doesn't matter a whole lot. It matters a little bit because it represents extra additional mana into Pier. But it's not the end of the world if this thing dies. Because we, like, it's fine. It's just, it's not actually that good. I don't know. You get the idea of what I'm trying to say here. Another cruise, and now Bird comes back and puts us to 17. And they're actually going to have to discard two cards here because they have nine in hand. So it could be like a couple more phoenixes if they have additional copies in their hand. 
And they can cast Scourge from Exile. Come on, hitting the strings off the top rope. Let's go. Give me that strings. I'm like super greedy. I already ripped Lotus Field and I'm like, give me more. Give me more. All right. So we didn't hit, um, but I can play this field. I'm just trying to think of the best things I can do here. Hmm. I'm going to bail again back to Brawl, I think. And just pass the turn. All right. I would be shocked if our opponent tapped out again this turn. Uh, now that they have a threat in play, they can just like sort of play the uh, the tempo role of attack you counter attack you counter. Another chart, of course. Okay. So if for some reason, let's say our opponent's an absolute insane person here. They tap out. We can play pure into the abyss, floating two mana, and then easily win the game. All right. So Phoenix getting in. We're gonna be Put to 14. Red mana. Lightning axe. Well, I'm glad you used it on my vizier. Hidden strings is a good one. And miss it. Right. So shooting the arc light phoenix doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, just because it will come back with three spells, so if they play two, I can kill the Phoenix, but it doesn't do much after that. Uh, so I'm going to auto yield to this and then just target them. There's no point really in, you know, hitting the Phoenix, like I said. They're looking for another Lightning Axe. And they hit it. Alright, so we're losing our Niv. Kind of unfortunate. I mean, it's going to draw us two cards, which is fine. Uh, there are two duds, but they they still have open two mana, which is kind of the bad part for me because we're looking to. Well, maybe I did want them to tap out to attack with Phoenix again uh, because we're trying to peer, and if they have negate, we're in trouble. Or even just like a removal spawn brawl is kind of annoying. Draw. Mystical Dispute, Shimmer. Let's play Brawl. Okay, so I'm going to cast Hidden Strings. Putting three. If they just kill Brawl here, let's say they tap out and kill Brawl. I'll have nine mana. That's enough to peer into the win. So you do get a little bit sneaky here. Okay, um, so let's try to Shimmer and hit another Strings, because that could win the game. Not quite. Um, hmm. All right, let's get lucky. Come on, hidden strings. Doesn't do a whole lot. Okay, so let's Sylvan Scrying. Go get a cycle land. Uh, try again next turn. Ah, you. That sucked. <laughs> Okay. Other pieces. Double Phoenix. So if they put both into play and swing, I go to two, which is still enough to cast Pier into the Abyss. One knocks me out of it. So if they like Spike Field Hazard, that's actually a problem because that would put me to one. And I can't Pier after that. Consider. That's two spells. Consider. So that's three. So now they'll get their phoenixes. Red mana. They're scaring me here, opponent. Another lightning axe. Okay, so they were definitely ready for niv -Mizzet. Okay, so they're going to put me to two. And this is seven. This is 11 mana, which is more than enough to win with Pier. So they're representing dispute, and I can beat a dispute, I believe. Okay. Actually, can Hazard even target players? To any target. Yes, it can. Okay. So, Peer. I don't know how many Spike Field Hazards are standard nowadays. Um, 
there's none in the first list that I'm looking at, so probably not the best example, but let's just keep playing, because if they have it, they have it. There's not a whole lot I can do. Um, actually, let's think about this. Tap for three, play Baral into strings. Well, I, I can't respond to that with a... Okay, so I need to cycle first. Attempt to untap my Lotus Field. They have it. Okay, so we're going to cycle another Vizier. Untap Lotus Field. And now we're going to Mystical Dispute Spike Field Hazard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if they just would have led on that, I couldn't, or even responded. They could have responded to the peer and I would have lost the game. And now I get to win. Yeah, our opponent definitely punted this. Okay, now I get to just run away. Brawl. Yes, hidden strings, target our two fields. Okay. So I'm going to count my chickens a little bit early. We went 4-1. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Especially with the one round being a close round where I maybe, maybe I did, maybe I didn't misplay, who knows. But this deck list is definitely very, very strong. Let me know what you think about it. Um, I really like this deck list, if I'm being honest. Like, this is probably the fourth league I've played it in, and I've tested a bunch of other lists in between, so I've just been playing a ton of Pioneer. Okay, another Hidden Strings is pretty good. Nine cards left. Let's Shimmer. Shimmer. Seven cards left. Four. What's left over here? Okay, so it's Balagad. Back to four. So this poor is going to put us at one card left in deck. This card will land. Shimmer for the last card. Red. Wish. 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 I just love wishes. What can I say? All right, and then let's finish off the league with a Thassa's Oracle. Get that 4-1. Woot, woot. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, so once again, this is the deck list. I did a very, very long deck tech in the beginning. I'm not going to go over it all again. Let me know what you thought. I really do think that this deck list is great, but I'm always willing to listen to why you might disagree with me. Um, I definitely feel like I misplayed in that one uh, teamer flash matchup. But, I don't know. It was so close. I'm just uh, focusing too much on that at the moment. It's going like, to ruin my night. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate you. Take care. Keep storming. You're beautiful and have a great day. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. But also, follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.